Hello everyone, today I will be showing you how to make this IC biome that I just done for my game as a concept. It will be a bit of an advanced tutorial, so if you want to learn the very basics, I have another tutorial in this channel and the link will be in the description. So this will be a bit more advanced, but I will try to cover as much as I can. So let's jump right into it. So as you open the program, this is what you will see, this blue box, we can control A to delete it, selects everything and then press delete and then I will change right away to the palette number three which is the whole gray palette because I like to choose my colors I don't really like the colors that the program has in store here so I will start by creating the materials and then I will paint with these materials so the first thing I will do I will just create just a block and I will go to the render I'll quickly set up my render. I will first make a lot of these things. I will just click and drag to select all of that. I will change the material here to blend, add transparency, add density, and change to the subsurface scattering media. I just like how this material works, that's all. And then I will change to where it says sky in, in the light options. I will change to HDRI sky, image-based lighting. And I will just rotate it a bit so I find some nice lighting. And with this, I think we are good to start working on our materials. I will change some of these materials later, not just the color, but I generally only work with blend. I just like how it looks. So I will just go here and start working on this material. I will make sure that my object, my object here has this material. For that, I will go to the region replace tool and I will just click there and it will replace all of the colors with that. You can really see it, but this material is applied. If I change anything in somewhere else, it doesn't change. That's good. So this is the one that we have in this object right now. So I will create three materials, a snowy material, a nice material, and a ground material, let's say. So let's start with the icy material. I will change right away to glass for this one. It's the only one that will be a glassy material. Uh, so I will click here instead and basically the more transparency the more reflective the object will be if you go with density you will find the color uh, of the object to be uh, more present and also something important is to go to all here and click where it says TR shadow it mean, this means transparent shadows so this will do it so the shadows have get tinted and the object doesn't cast like such a strong hard shadow so the light now will travel through the object and hit the ground instead of just bouncing out of the object okay so for an icy material i will change the color to blue very subtle kind of blue is it, this will be a bit of a cartoonish representation it won't be like super accurate or realistic and the roughness will basically make your material uh, be more perfectly reflecting like a mirror or more rubbery uh, so I, I feel like going for a high roughness gives it a bit of a, a colder effect if you put something out of the fridge you will notice that it looks a bit more like this than like that so that's why I will go with a high reflect uh, roughness but of course just use these tools to find whatever you uh, find best for your for your work so the next thing I could touch upon is the index of reflection. You can Google online like index of reflection of ice, water, and it will give you a, like a number. This is how the light reacts when it hits the object and how the things behind it are distorted. And basically if you add more, it will behave more of a, like a metallic object. If you add, add less, it will just vanish. Okay, so I will use 1.3 1, 1. that is very close to the index of refraction of water. Uh, what's my color there so let's put it back and this will be my icy material just something very simple to start with so this line will be for my glass kind material so next i will work on a snowy material so i will just click here and then click here with the region replace tool to replace all of the voxels that are containing the color that were here so basically this tool will say imagine i have something like that right so if i 
go with this material, which is a red, which is a new one that I will just make a purple just for demonstration. If I use this tool, it will change all of the voxels that have this material when I click here. This this material, so it will change all of those to purple and none, nothing else. And then if I click here, it will change all of those to purple. I hope that makes sense, but try it yourself and it might just start making more sense. But for now, let's go back to this one. Region uh, replace. And I will make this one just pure white and see how, how that looks. So that's okay, but snow in general, especially when you have like pockets or, or some uh, occluded areas, like something like this in between, the shadow of snow, of snow is a bit bluer. So that's why I will just add a hint of blue into the snow, but just very little. So it looks white, but it has some blue to it, okay? So that's for the snow and for the ground, I will just go with a normal uh, subsurface material. I will adjust the colors a bit later, but this will be our three layers. Um, because basically what I want to create is a ground that will be uh, cutted by some icy looking material like that and that will have snow on the top like so so this is what they're what I'm going for so depending on how the light hits it it will look a bit better maybe I will just make it a bit more reacting to the light and let's see what we can create with this okay so now that we have our material set up you don't need to do this first but just to show you I will start by making this um, working area very big you can go in and out pressing tab and when you are in uh, you will see the option to make it bigger right here so I will go as big as you can basically it's 256 uh, cubic and I will start working in this area so something you can do is go to your voxel mode which is this option here and with it with this option and attach you can basically draw like a pencil in ms paint and that will create a line so what i do is i created like a random shape here let's i'm working i'm making some ground right and then when i close it i go to my face mode and i click once and that will fill the entire thing Right, so the next thing I will do is going back to my voxel mode by, and uh, you can see here the name of the things. If you see voxel mode right now, it says V between brackets. That means that pressing V will just select it automatically and F will select automatically the face mode. So I'm going back and forth between those, always with the attach option on. So once I clear, created one of these uh, layers, I can start working on the next one. So, for instance, I could just go another one like that and then F to create another layer. I will turn on um, this edge display to make it easier to visualize because I have, otherwise it's hard to notice when something starts and something ends. So, let's go back and I will just create a bunch of these layers now. Okay, so now we have this base. What I will do is start, is start adding detail to the parts that are a bit tall. So for instance, in here we have a big wall that is always the same. So I will just paint another little layer there, maybe one here, right? Maybe I can make it too tall in there and paint some more. You can see that this is a very quick way to make very nice looking voxel geometry, geography actually. So maybe here it can be a bit taller and then you can a bit less Oops, make sure you close it before you add another layer. 
and this way we're creating some sort of steps going all the way up from the side which is kind of cool and actually I could go no yeah this is as far as I can go yeah and in here I could just add a very small balcony there So you see how very quickly we are creating something that looks pretty cool. Just continue adding detail until you are satisfied. And maybe we can have another layer here. Something larger than that. You can also go with the erase tool. You can just make it deeper if you want to add like a lake or something, right? And in here, let's just take some more. Nice. So we have something here that is kind of cool. Just continue to add detail until you like it. I won't just take it too far for the sake of this tutorial not to be three hours long. So what I want to show you in this case is I will paint my eyes using the axis mode. If there are several ways to do this, but what you want, to, what I would want to do is go to my vertex mode and use this axis. If you see, if I use the paint mode, it will just paint on one axis wherever I paint. So in this case, I will just use the z-axis you can just keep trying actually I think the x-axis was giving me the best results and with this I will start creating like a nice cat over the geometry here so you see this will go all the way and I can just continue to create ice in between all of this rock maybe this layer is all ice right and we can fix a bit of that later so let's continue to paint and maybe now let's change the y axis and do it within this axis here and if you see that you're painting and you're just like messing it up too much and you don't like it you can always just go to your region replace make sure you have the same palette color option and you can just like replace a lot of it at once so let's not worry too much and let's uh, paint for now. Let's have a good time and see what comes of it. So now that we added some eyes, something we can do is try to keep it only on the inside and not so much on the out on the top, right? Because it's not very nice when you see it like here. So let's try to remove it from those areas. I will just paint a bit more, just, just like that. And now I will go back to my uh, material, the purple one, and with the face mode, I will start replacing, sorry, uh, make sure you go to paint and not the bucket option and no axis. And I will start replacing with this face tool all the top parts that I don't like. Nice, so we have our eyes. And our geometry, I'll just make here like a little lake. So I will just paint there, boom. And let's see how that looks. So now you see we have this effect where if the light hits the right way, hopefully maybe we can make it into orthographic. We would hopefully notice that we have some eyes in between it's not super obvious, so maybe we can work it a bit more. But I think I think it's kind of let let's let's finish it and then we work a bit more on our materials, worst case scenario. Because I think it's kind of cool for now. So the next step, once I like this, what I will do is just paint with the face mode snow in all the top layers. So just make sure you're painting, and this will do it. So whenever you have a tall mountain you will see the wall but the first layer will always be snow 
So I'll paint all the snow now. And that will start giving us our snowy field. Something I really like to add um, is some shadow in between the things. So try to aim your lighting in a way that you see some shadow and some light that draws everything. But also you can add display edges. And if you go here and make it very thin, you can have maybe a two or something. You can have a bit of a, an edge that will really help you to differentiate one thing from the other. I really like this effect. Uh, you can make it more or less obvious by making it thinner and also by making it, instead of black, you can put it here and just making it a bit whiter. So play with it until you find something you like. I just like to use it, so I will just leave it on for now. So this is the result. If you if you don't like to see so much white, you can try to maybe um, make sure you keep more taller parts. So you see more of the blue on the wall. Maybe I can do it here and just paint all of this white. And that way you will have more contrast between the snow and the slopes. So this is how I've been creating my geometry. So the next step, once I have this, I like to work with a few materials and then make it more complex. We've got some snow there. So now that we have this, what I will do is randomize a bit the material. So I will just Control Shift, left click and drag to copy this material here and again to copy it there. The difference will be on the other side will be a bit lower, just a little bit and a bit darker. And then I will control out, left click and drag, and that will make a gradient between the first color and the second one. Make it very obvious so you can see it. Control out, left click and drag. You see it creates one color per box until it interpolates between the first one and the second one. So what I will do with this is click and drag, left click and drag to select all of them. And I will, with my selection tool, region select, select all that is white. So if you click and it only selects one, you need to change to same palette color. That will select all of that material. And then I will right click here, brand. And you see that that will just randomly paint one of any color that you have selected into the snow. So that very quickly will give us a bit of a very, very tiny variation in the snow. So, if I change a bit the lighting, I can show you another trick, which is selecting some of them. So this, this, and holding control to select. You see how it has like a little white dot in the middle? You don't see it because it's white. But if I shift and select some of them, I can just change the roughness of those. So some of them are less reflective, the IOR. They are like less shiny. So that will create um, a broken up effect on your snow very quickly, which I think it looks pretty cool. So play with that to make it more or less. And I will do the same with my terrain. I will just make it a bit darker. Bottom, not exaggerating, just a little bit. Select now, go back to model and select all the blue. And select all of those, randomize. And now we have some variation there. I think that was maybe too little, so I will make it more exaggerated. And I will just control out drag to recreate the gradient. Maybe this can go a bit that. And now we have some variation there too. And why don't we do this the same for the eyes? I will just make three ice materials. Okay. I will make one more transparent, like very white transparent, and another one a bit more exaggerated. So what I will do is I will give different properties to all of these. So I will just first apply them. So select all the eyes, select your three materials and randomize. And now what I will do is get a bit closer to see them and start working on them. So this you see only one is transparent right now because the other two are 
still blend. So I'll go to glass and I will make one of them non roughness at all, very transparent. And the other one, I will make it less dense and transparent and very low roughness. So I forgot to turn this one to glass and in here too. I'll go, through, go from subsurface base to glass and then you will see a more glassy effect. So maybe this one could have some more roughness. More IOR. And maybe I need to exaggerate a bit more the color to really see it. And this third one could be no density. So then we have some variation and everything. So play with it until you like how it looks. Maybe the colors are too different there. Maybe I can just make the same color but different refraction effects. Maybe make it more similar between each other. So play with it until you kind of like how they look. And from that point, you can just start creating these assets. So what I would recommend is we have one of these. I would just go out by pressing tab and make it smaller so it goes all in there and you can create different ones so for now i just control c control v and move it away but you can make several different ones and you can start rotating them and mixing them together like something like that and when you render that you see like very quickly you can create different things you could also for instance grab this one and go to scale and scale on the Z axis, I think it will be. So you change that and press enter, and that will make it taller. So then you can press G, sorry. So click here and press G. Oh, you need to go up. And that will bring it to the ground level to make sure that it's not under the, the rendering ground. Because basically if you render it like that, you will only see a little bit of it. But if you press G, it will just go to the ground. So now we have a taller version of this one. We can put somewhere like there, wherever. And you can see how very quickly you can create a lot of geometry. Something that could happen is that you create so many of these that then your render starts struggling to render it. Basically, what you need to do is go here and click where it says sparse. This will make it so it renders many many more voxels but see how quickly i created like a super alien crazy geometry and uh, you can render it from perspective and maybe change the the camera lens to something like 15 so you have like some something in between orthographic and perspective and there you go you can this way create very crazy uh, geometry and and have something very nice looking very quickly. So I hope you liked it and let me know in the comments what you would like to see next. See you.